Alrighty, well, morning everybody, and cast time once again. And, um, this one here, gonna be another kind of haste job. I just kind of ran behind, um, just trying to get this all put together and stuff. And a, most of which was spent, was, uh, most of, most of which was spent trying to find the right kind of music, because my, um, YouTube algorithm is pretty much being bombarded with lo-fi music, uh, lo-fi copyright free music, so... It's just I'm having to wade through all that. I mean, I don't. I mean, I definitely don't hate lo-fi music or anything, but not, not all the time. But like, but like I said, I got, I'm getting like damn near every kind of lo-fi music, music out there, on my um, my recommendations list. So I'm having to sit here and trudge through all that. Um, and a lot of the stuff that I did find that I wanted to play was copyrighted. So eventually, finally, I found a, uh, I found this. Um, this is another one from Iron Cthulhu Apocalypse. Uh, to my knowledge, none of their stuff is copyrighted, so... So, this is gonna be... Number Stations for the Dead. Oh, yeah, and, um... Something else has been going on, too, from time to time. You might hear a loud... <laughs> noise. That's, uh, that's my roof. Like, apparent, like, apparently there's... There's... It's icing up up there or something. But usually it does that around this time of year. Either, either um, ice is hardening. Oh, and I do need to do something else here. Uh, whoops. So let me fix that. Come on. There we go. Okay. Uh, should be good. Okay, so I just kind of some poor prep, kind of kind of some poor preparation here on my part. So let me go ahead and rewind this back. There it goes, there it goes. Had me worried for a moment. Saw a black saw a black screen. I thought maybe my um OBS was screwing up or something. Okay, it's already up. Okay, but anyway, um So I was kinda of bit kinda of busy last night and slash this morning. Um, just play some Gems of War. Um, and, um, kind of the, kind of the same problem that I've been having. Um, just, I mean, despite the fact that it's in the middle of winter, I'm getting allergy problems. Like, like especially at work, I'm constantly having to run to the, having to grab some paper towels and honk, blow my nose and stuff. Nose is uh, either stuffing up or it was running like crazy. So, not surprisingly, I couldn't get deadly squat for sleep. Um, but um, I just went ahead, took the plunge, and tried streaming yesterday. I think I was on maybe a couple of hours, and then all of a sudden, just kept nodding off on stream. So, when that happens, I just usually I just kill it. Uh, and then after that. Um, worked on my blog, took a nap, uh, got back up, and then just decided to play some Killer Instinct. So, I uh, just played that, um, played my main, Hisako, pretty much the only character I care to play. Except maybe, like, Rash once in a, I think I'm, I'll try, um, I think last, last time I streamed Killer Instinct, some of my viewers were wanting me to try different characters. I tried them out, but... Interesting concepts, them, but uh, they weren't a Sako, so back I went. And then um, another thing I did too is um, I decided to go ahead and um, I did a I did story mode, but I only had a set to set to beginner. I mean, like I said, I'm new to I'm new to this game, so I'm I'm 
far from being an expert. No, hold on a second. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a drink of some um, Arizona green tea. Hold on. Okay. But anyway. But yeah, uh, beginner mode. Um, and eventually, I did beat, I did beat, I did beat the story mode. So. I guess um, one thing I could probably start doing in the future is um, do another story mode, but up the difficulty a little bit, or just up the um, up the difficulty mode up one. But um, but uh, throughout the night though, just been um, just been doing training mode. You know, just. Trying to get him, trying to get him some practice, you know. Still kind of getting better and better with her and stuff. But I want, I know, um, I know one one problem I've been having, been having with this game is uh, it jumps when I don't want it to. Like I'll be moving left or right and hop up in the air I go. Like no, I don't want to jump. So it. But yeah, that that can really throw me off. You know, kept getting my butt, you know, kept getting my butt kicked and stuff. There's um, trying to trying to think. There's something else I was wanting to say about that too. I want to say there. I also want to say there's uh, there's double tap issues in there as well. Like uh, the same problem I got with uh, Gems of War. I need a new controller. I, I really, need, yeah, I really need to retire the one I have now. But the problem is, is new controllers cost about 60 bucks. That's money I really can't afford to spend. But uh, my controller does what I call a double tap. Like, uh, you push a button once, the controller decides that, decides to think that I pushed it twice. So the button press registers an additional time. And when playing Gems of War, that can really mess me up. Like I, I only want to, I only want to push it once because I want to see what this ability does or whatever. But the controller will decide to double tap it on me and actually cast that ability. Like, uh, no. So, so I'm thinking, um, it's probably doing some, uh, it's probably doing some double tapping in the game too. Uh, yes, I forgot to do something else. So, hang on just a second. Let me fix this. Where you at? But anyway, but so far, um... Believe it or not, though, this uh, this game is actually starting to grow on me. I think I said a while back, um, I, and I still kind of think it to this day, but uh, it's basically a rushdown combo game. Um, you know, there's there there's no grappling, there's no actual grappling in this game. At least not not what I consider grappling. Grapp would be something like Zangief in uh, Street Fighter Two. Where he's got at least, he has like he has a, he has like four throws, six if you want to count these uh, two two holds that he does. He has to like repeatedly hit attack buttons to do more damage, kind of like block his bite attack. You know, he, it's like a close throw, and he'll start chomping on the opponent. You keep hitting the attack buttons really fast to do more damage. I guess I guess um, I just remember that Zangief has a couple of these too. But yeah, that that's what I consider a grappler. Um, Rook and Fantasy Strike, kind of the same thing. I mean, he's got like, I think he has one, two, three. Yeah, I think he's got uh, three different throws on there. So I mean, that's that's what I consider grappling. I mean, it isn't like well, most other games, where uh, it's like every character has like, or like grapplers maybe have one one more throw than everybody else. 
But I think, uh, I think Killer Instinct is kind of like that from the little I played of it. I think they're kind of like that as well. They have, um, they all have a regular throw, but I don't, I don't think any of the characters have any extra ones, though. Or let me rephrase that, let me rephrase that, um. No, wait, I'm wrong. Wait, wait, hang on, let me back up a minute. Yeah, um, Hisako actually does have a couple throws. The, uh, her special moves, they're, um, two of them are actual throws. I just remembered that. That was, uh, something else I need to, I need to throw in here, too. This is probably, uh, let me go over here real quick. This is probably uh, one of the other reasons why the game's starting to grow on me. Um, those that have actually seen my streams will probably be aware of this, but let me... Okay, good. Went right to it. But anyway, um... But yeah, like I said, this... This was another reason why, um, why this game's growing on me. I can't really think of any other fighting games that have this, like the Complete Killer Instinct Guide uh, by a guy named Infill. And the reason I found out about this was because um, I watched part of a documentary. No, I think uh, when I went on when I went on YouTube. preparation but anyway um but the re the reason um the reason I found the reason I found out about this was I was on YouTube I think I typed down killer instinct guide and then um this there and I, mean, I I tried watching one of the guides it I couldn't find any that was uh I mean I'm not I'm not super picky about quality but it, it would uh when some of these uh, guides that I'm looking at were almost, I want to say almost as bad as mine. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not the pot calling the kettle black, or I'm not being hypocritical or anything. But if I was to, if I was to make a guide, it would be about the same quality as these ones here. Just, you know, just some guy talking in the background while he's got the game running here. Let me show you how to do this. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. See, and you hold this button here, and it does this. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. You know, I mean, I do that too, but. I would all. I'd also the, probably the first thing I would say to is the reason why I'm making this video is that way is to make it easier for me to you know to make uh, making my blog easier you know which is really is which is the, really is the reason why I make a video like that it's it's easier to just make a video than it is for me to have to type out this huge wall of text you know complete with images and gifs and whatnot I mean you know ma just making a video was, is going to save me a lot of time so. But, you know, that is, but I'm, you know, I'm kind of, you know, so I'm kind of different in this respect. But uh, some of these videos, some of these uh, videos I'm seeing on YouTube are full-fledged standalone guides. They're hard to watch. You know, I need a, for me to watch something like this, you know, you have to have, they have to be more sophisticated, for lack of a better word. So, but anyway, getting back to my original topic. Check, tried watching some of these guide videos, couldn't get into it. Eventually, a documentary came up about um the making of the greatest fighting game guide ever, or something like that. Um, so okay, I checked out the documentary and um I watched some of the. I think he had a ultimately he had a link to this guide in the description, but um I just you know watched this guy talking about it and stuff, so. I went and um, I went and looked at. It. I'm like, oh hey, hey, I remember this. There was um, they actually had a, I think it was on the uh, fighting game Reddit. There was an article about rollback netcode or delay like netcode delay based netcode rollback netcode, and uh, I'm sitting here reading this. I'm like, damn, this is a pretty good guide. It's like pretty comprehensive and stuff. I mean, a lot of it went over my head, but I mean, it was still pretty informative stuff. So. Um, so I, you know, checking out the documentary. I'm like, hmm, I wonder what this guide looks like. Click the link. I'm like, oh, damn. Wait, this looks familiar. Yeah, you know, so. So anyway, but I've been, uh, I've also been reading this fairly. I've been reading this a fair amount as well. So like I said, 
this was the other reason that this game is growing on me. So, but like I said, I can't really think of another fighting game that has this. Um, maybe Fantasy Strike. I know. Um, he wrote a. Um, it was it was uh, created by a guy named David Serlin. He's a legend in fighting game circles. He was all. He also he was also the creator of the uh, of the collectible card game Yomi. And uh, I guess all the characters in Fantasy Strike, and I think all the mechanics are based on that Yomi card game. But uh, I think um. He wrote a he wrote a book, like how to like, how to win at fighting games or something like that. I don't know the exact title, but I'm sure he'd probably have a guide. But he, he, like I said, he's the only. No, wait a minute. Yeah, he's got a, he's got a bunch of replay videos in the game itself on how the characters work. But otherwise, I can't really think of any other fighting games out there that does what that has what Killer Instinct has. So, but yeah, that's, but yeah, that's that's the other reason that uh that's keep me playing, that's uh keep me playing Killer Instinct. See, and I think um, most other fighting games I played that I could think of, they don't. There's no, there's no outside the game guide or anything like that. I mean, yeah, they got in-game tutorials and whatnot, but you know, nothing that I can actually read. You know. So, but anyway, um, gotta move along. Uh, one other big thing I know I saw today too. Rush has a, Rush has their own pinball machine now. I think it came out like a few days ago. Um, and Rush is what is, especially when it comes to lyrics, uh, one of my all-time favorite bands. And so we got Rush, and then we got Pinball, the best of both worlds. And and those that know me know I love Pinball, despite despite all the right despite all me the raging you know, despite me getting all pissed off when playing, still love it. But I mean, like I said, you got. Um, or at least, at least in theory, I just, I just now realized that, uh, the new pinball table, it's got a, it's got a TV screen, and I'm, you know, I'm no hipster or anything like that, but I'm, I don't care for pinball machines that have that TV in the, in the back of the table, it's too distracting. You know, cause when I'm, when playing pinball, I want to be able to focus on the table, and less on the back of it, so, but at, you know, but kind of at the same time too, you know, a little bit of graphics would would actually you know would actually enhance the uh, tape would en would actually enhance. Hang on, let me back up. For lack of a better phrase, enhance the experience. It's it's another word and phrase I don't really care to say these days because of how cliche it is. Experience, like, like in this day and age, video games. Half the time, they're not even called games anymore. They're called experiences. It just kind of harkens back to what George Carlin was complaining about. The softening of the language, making it all fruity. You know. Sometime during my life, toilet paper became bathroom tissue. You know. or back in my day, they called it shell shock. Two simple words. Shell shock. Now it's Battle fatigue. You know, if you see the stand-up, you know what I'm talking about. But yeah, it's like these days the terminology it's gotten really fruity. You know, now you know back in back in the '80s when I was first or back in the '70s and '80s when I was first into video games. You know, we call we said the games were fun. These days they're called satisfying. Oh, this gameplay is so satisfying. Back then, we called it fun. So, but anyway, getting back, getting back on topic. Um. But yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of uh, tables, with uh, TV screens in the back. Again, it just kind of kills the mood, I guess. Yeah, uh, I mean, but at the same time, you know, I'd like a little something more. You know, a little bit of a visual aspect like that is nice. So tables around the 90s was probably the apex where it was just the uh, simple black and orange 
and not the full-on Titantron that you see these days. And um, I guess another thing I probably compl another thing about about Russia, and I guess um, while I'm on the subject too, uh, I guess a few years ago, Primus, another one of my all-time favorite bands, and as well as Les Claypool, the bass player, he's a bass legend, but um, I also kind of like him as a person as well. Um, he actually wrote a book that I actually kind of like called South of the Pump House. Um, it kind of autobiographical. And um, I had kind of a similar experience too back in the 80s and 90s when uh, my uh, my first job, there was a lot of crack. People were smoking crack. Um, I had some of my co-workers, um, my, some of my managers. Hell, I know a manager that actually sold the stuff. Um... One of my managers was a pothead. Like, he was really into it. Um, I had a, another manager that, that I guess he had smoked crack ever since he was five years old. And he was doing coke. And he was selling the stuff. So, but, um, but, um, Les Claypool's experience back when he was younger was almost like that of mine. There was a lot of meth when, around where he lived. So, I mean, but... I think he said something like, luckily for him, he was only a pothead. He only smoked pot, and that was it. So, but, anyway, um, getting back, getting back, again, getting back to the topic at hand, um, apparently, uh, they had a new Primus table that came out a few years ago. Again, one of my all-time favorite bands right there. You know, so, but, but, uh, on, on the downside, though, these tables... I'm never gonna play them. And the the Primus table I just remember too is actually based on the um, Well and Nelly Juicy Melons table. It's it's a retro table, so if given a choice, I'm definitely going. I'm definitely playing the Primus table over the Rush one. Um, and uh, and I, and like both tables though, I don't think I'll ever be able to play these. Um, one. If they are available around where I live, I'd probably have to sink in at least two dollars and quarters to play the stuff. Yeah, the closest pinball arcade around where I live is about 20 miles away. And with two exceptions that I can think of, Captain Fantastic and Ted Nugent, all other tables cost at least 50 cents, two quarters. I think they had a they had a Monster Bash table. I think you had to sink in like two dollars and quarters. So yeah, I definitely ain't messing with that one. And I'm pretty sure the, the Rush and Primus tables, if they were even available at this bowling alley nearby me, I'd probably have to pay at least that amount to play them. So no. And and uh and that, this is actually one of those situations too where I actually do not want these tables ported to Pinball FX3. Why? Copyright. Because I'm pretty sure every song that's going to be on these tables is copyrighted. It's like the Star Wars tables they have in FX3 right now. It's like all the music on those tables is copyrighted. Meaning, I would Meaning, um, the only place where I'd uh, be able to upload any of these videos to is Twitch. And even then, it's a bit of a risk. I mean, whereas uh, YouTube would have just put a copyright claim on my video, which actually happened back in the day when I first started streaming uh, Pinball FX3 and Arcade or, or, I, or I, specifically FX3 that has all the Star Wars music yeah it would um it would trip YouTube's content ID and end up claiming my video which which meaning that um you know in all these times I talk about YouTube copywriting my stuff I don't think I really really ever explained uh what happens when what um YouTube copyright claims a video. I mean, none of my videos are monetized. So, but apparently, I'm even I'm not immune. I mean, lots of other people complain about their videos being mon being a uh, claim because what happens to them is their videos are no longer monetized. So, the people that issue the copyright claim gets all that money. But see, even for guys like myself that that um that are willfully not monetizing our videos we still get fucked why ads you know but that's my big thing because what happens when um when they claim your video ads get put all over them now 
and uh, but uh, and those that know me know that I really fucking hate them. I was one of those back in the day. Whenever I wanted to watch a video, the moment I saw an ad, I'd skip it if possible. If if I couldn't, I was pushing that F5 button, the refresh button. I would keep refreshing that sucker over and over and over until I got an ad-free video. So, and even then, even if you got past that, you still had to deal with uh, periodic ads in the video itself. So, and I refuse to put anybody else through what I went through. So that's one of the reasons why having why copyright, having my videos copyrighted is a very bad, very serious issue with me. So it's 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 because of the ads that'll get put on it. Okay, so but anyway, once again, going back to the original topic at hand, I wouldn't be and um, I would I actually would not want them porting these tables to FX3, because you know especially for especially for tables based around musicians. You know what's the point? I mean, and, and yeah, to be to their credit, FX3, it does have a copyrighted music option that will automatically silence all the music on that table. But yeah, I tried that with the Star Wars tables. It ain't the same. No Star Wars music. All you hear is sound effects. Like, but the music? Like, nothing. All you hear is... Bing, 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 bing. Bing, 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 boop, 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 bing, 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 bing. Like, that's all you hear, like the classic pinball sounds. That's all you're gonna hear, like no music. So it just, it's, it, they don't, it, they don't sound right. So, so yeah, it, and if they ever, if they ever did port Russian Primus to FX3, it, it it's totally pointless, because if, um, if I absolutely did not want my videos to be copyrighted, or to be copyright claim, or, no, wait, 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 you know, if I was dead set on keeping my videos from being copyrighted, and clicking this option on, there's no point in having the fucking table then, because, you know, the whole central purpose is to, as much as, to hear the music as it is to play the table. So... And then, to say nothing of the fact that, hey, this is kind of a little nitpick, a personal nitpick, but most of the, I, I did watch a gameplay sample of Rush, of the Rush table. I mean, most of the music, it's just standard fare, popular shit that either I've listened to so many times over the years, or I've been forced to listen to so many times over the years. You know, Tom Sawyer, Free Will. Um... You know, stuff like that. Popular stuff you hear on the radio. I'm pro more than likely, I'm sick and tired of hearing them. Well, that's what the, that's the uh, songs that you're going to hear on the Rush table. So, even then, I, I wouldn't really want to hear them. Because, I mean, I'm, I mean, my favorite album from Rush is Caress of Steel. It's, I guess, one of those albums that nobody else liked. You know, um, and I don't think the Necromancer is on this table. I'm pretty sure it isn't. Um, probably my two favorite songs from Rush is uh, Rivendell and Something for Nothing. I'm pretty sure that they're not on this table. So, and I'm guessing with Primus, it's probably the same thing too. Um, probably my, that I can think of at the moment. My favorite song from Primus is, uh, probably, uh, probably Bob probably a toss-up between Bob and the Toys Go Winding Down. Hell, my favorite, my favorite bass piece of all time is the Toys Go Winding Down, but I'm, I'm guessing it's probably not going to be on this table. Hell, I'm not, now that I think about it, I'm not even sure Winona's Big Brown Beaver is going to be on the table. Because of the innuendo, you know, gotta keep it kid-friendly, so I'm, I'm pretty sure, I'm guessing, uh, the Big Brown Beaver ain't going to be on the Primus table. Otherwise, it's probably going to be Mud might be on the table. I don't know what else is going to be on it. I, in fact, if I can remember to, after uh, after this cast is over, I might actually just go ahead and uh, check out that table. 
so. Shouldn't have bothered. Okay. So, <laughs> so I pretty much talked myself hoarse. Like, I was, I was expecting this to be like, you know, a short 10, 15 minute video, but damn, I kind of went a little over long. But yeah, this, this completely went unexpected, but this is also one of the reasons why I do these cast videos, just to get the words out, instead of it being all locked up inside my head, you know. Just gives me a chance, and, you know, instead of talking it out between me, me and all my me and all my buddies up inside my head, you know, just talk it out here and on video. So, so anyway, but anyway, I'm just gonna go ahead and kill it here. Um, it's been about half an hour, so I still got other stuff I gotta get taken care of. So I had to get going on that, like like my blog post, since I just now remembered I completely forgot to work on that. Um, got a little too involved in Killer Instinct and all that, so <laughs> still. So, kind of late on that. But anyway, anyway, I got to go, guys. So, thanks for dropping in and listening to me. I appreciate that always. And I should be able to do another one of these tomorrow morning. So, but until then, though, take care. See you all next time. And bye for now.